least someone would do that to someone else's home. You'd be surprised. Right, I'll wait for the police. You two get yourselves off. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. And do us a favour. Don't tell anybody, will you? Wait till I tell Roy first. Okay. Thanks, girls. How long have you smoked, Mr. Barlow? Oh, uh, since I was a kid, 15, 16. Terrible, I know, but there you go. Did you feel you could confront your wife without having a cigarette first? No way. And why did you smoke it in the ginnel rather than outside the pub? Because uh, Norris and uh, Mr. Cole and Miss Taylor were still there and the landlady doesn't like it. Not that that bothered me. This is all rehearsed. Have you ever done jewellery service, Avadra? Yeah, once, years ago. Tax evasion. Seemed quite a nice chap, though. Mm. Still wrong, though, eh? No, no, I'm not excusing it. I think I'd quite like to be on a jewellery. Does it always have to be an equal split between men and women? Maria. What? Well, it's not Club 18 to 30. No, but still, there was someone I liked. Oh, you can't be that desperate, Charlotte. Sure. I'm kidding. Kind of. Oh, hello, love. Hi, Mrs. Roberts. Uh, is it ready? All done. You've got all that oil up already? Yeah, got it all up, every last drop. Uh, right. Um, well, I'll pick it up tomorrow, OK? We kind of need the space. Well, maybe you could drop it round here because I'm snowed under. Are you? No. <laughs> Maria. Look, just come with me. What? Just round the block, I'll ride shotgun. You'll do what? <laughs> we can take it nice and slow. Oh, you know, listen, I am not scared of driving again, if that's what you're suggesting. Well, we can go wherever you want. We can drive to the end of the road, if that's what you can manage, or we can get onto the ring road into the country. Hmm. I think I might be scared of driving and all. Come on. Doesn't look like I've got much choice, does it, Marie? <laughs> <clears throat> be gentle with her. Well. Why did you tell your wife everything? Why didn't you sugarcoat it? Because if I had any chance at all of uh, saving my marriage, I had to get there first before Tina did. What did you think Tina would do? I thought she was going to storm round there and tell her everything in her own words, you know. When? Right then. You know, that night. No, he didn't. So she was already dead. What did your wife say in response to this shocking and unexpected confession? Well, she wanted to know when it started. How did you answer? I just told her the truth. Uh, um, it had happened on our wedding night. She'd had a few too many drinks and she was already in bed and that's when I first kissed Tina. And who else knew about this, this unsavoury little detail? Nobody. Not your friend, Mr MacDonald? No, nobody except Tina. Nobody except Tina. So you only revealed this damning detail because you were convinced Miss McIntyre was about to provide it herself and... Sooner rather than later. Yes, exactly. What did your wife say? She was, uh, she was stunned, you know, and furious. And then she stormed out. She said she was going to have it out with Tina. Screaming various threats, as we've already heard. Yeah, she was upset. We all say things we don't mean. You know, he was laughing his head off. He was dying yes. for a drink. Thank you, Mr. Barlow. What did you do then? Uh, my friend, Steve. Steve MacDonald, he sat with me and, um, But he was mainly worried uh, about his missus finding out that he knew about the affair. And when did you leave? Uh, when everybody started saying that something was happening outside, they were saying there's an ambulance. How did you react? Just the same as everybody else. I went out to see what was happening. I mean, I didn't... I didn't even think of Tina at all. You know, I had all these things tumbling through my mind about what I'd just said. And, and then I just saw her being put into an ambulance. How did you feel? I was shocked. And confused. She's a nice person. You know, she made us... It was a mistake getting involved with me. 
I know that. And I tried to tell her that. But it was over between us, so why would I go and kill her? It's not in me. We'd be all right seeing yourself in. Seeing yourself in? He's not six years old. Just still open, he'll be fine. I think I'd like to be on my own for a while. Well, mind how you go, then. Yes. What's happened? <sighs> right. I better see how Jason's getting on. Oh, come on, one more game. Have you seen the time? This is supposed to be my lunch break, half an hour. Who says? Says me. Well, you're the boss. What are you going to do? Dock your own wages? Oh, it's all right for you. Just wipe a few windows. That's it. Your day's finished. Wipe a few windows? You don't know what you're on about. I've got to do my collections yet. Mind you, I'll do that later when everybody's back from work. <clears throat> all right, I'll have you one more game, then I'm going. All right, I'll get me. God, you volunteering again. You can't stay away from the bar. I don't mind. Mm, even when it was mine out. Hey, I did give you the money. Yeah, well, he's got it bad. He's on the love train and he's running out of steam. <laughs> Next stop, Liz McDonald. Yeah. Boys. <laughs> trouble. I'm not disputing it. Now, if he had the guts to apologise, Tony will never apologise. Oh, I've had enough of blokes throwing the weight around with me, chucking the toys out of the pram. There's one thing I don't like in a man, it's stubbornness. Well, there's a few other things as well, don't get me wrong, but... No, stubbornness, I will not put up with. Now, if he admitted he was in the wrong, I'd respect him. But this, mooning around, expecting me to cave. No chance. She's a child. Well, I won't go that far. She acts like it. She's just proud. She's stubborn. There's one thing I can't be doing with in a woman is stubbornness and sulking. You know, I sulking either. Or the silent treatment. Well, actually, I think she wants you back. <laughs> of course she wants me back. <laughs> well, you're not sure on confidence, are you? I'm better off single. Oh, yeah, aren't we all? Population would grind to a halt. If she said sorry, I'd think about it. Say sorry for what? For lying to me, keeping secrets. And you told her everything, did you? No secrets. I'm an open book. Yeah, an open book full of tall stories. I've never lied to her. Maybe she didn't ask the right questions. Well, that's her problem, not mine. Cafe door was locked. Cafe door were locked. This door were locked. They must have seen me nip out. I'd put a sign on the door saying I would be back in 15 minutes. <laughs> I only nipped to Dev's to get some change. Roy, I can't tell you. No, I, I, I was thinking it would be better if we don't touch anything until the police arrive, you know, fingerprints and whatnot. <sighs> Is that valuable? I know who did this. Who? Those teenagers from yesterday. I saw them again this morning. But well, they know they're just kids. Who else would be capable of something so mindless, so willfully destructive? Bored, naive, disillusioned youth. Right, the police have arrived. I'm, I'm gonna go down and let them in. was a bookmaker. A man you might consider well used to weighing up the odds. Isn't that what he did on the night of the 26th of May, 2014? Didn't he spread his bets? First, he agreed to run away to Portsmouth with his mistress. Then, then circumstances changed. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to take these up to the officers and then I'll come back down and make some sweet in a minute, love. Oh, 
Why, why didn't you call us? Sophie's just told me. The crime scene investigators arrived looking for fingerprints. This is just bad luck. No, no. It, it was those young men we saw this morning. One of them threw a can. I picked it up to dispose of it. An act of provocation in his eyes. What, they broke into your flat because you picked up a can? They destroyed the closed-circuit television camera like seasoned criminals. I still can't get hold of Owen. Are you tired? Listen, he needs that lock replacing. Right, I'll give Jace a bath. Sorry. Why? He reckons he knows who did it, them kids that was outside. They've destroyed his photo album. Right, well, should we go and have a drive around? Yeah. No, but please, let's leave it to the police. How did they get up there? Where were you? I just nipped to the corner shop to get some change. I put a sign on the door saying back in 15 minutes. I might as well say you've got 15 minutes to burgle us. I should have been more careful. Yeah. Well, look, it's nobody's fault. Well, oh, Mr Cropper, we're all done. A drop, no doubt, during his subsequent attempt to dispose of all incriminating evidence. We've learned how this led to the discovery of a silver top hat, the missing charm, along with traces of Miss McIntyre's blood, placing the burglar at number one Coronation Street, Peter Barlow's parents' home address. The defendant was on a losing streak. There's various vices. Adultery, alcoholism, deceitfulness had finally caught up with him. A bright, popular, vivacious young woman with her whole life ahead of her killed. And nothing we have heard in this court contradicts the fact that Peter Barlow, and Peter Barlow alone, was responsible. A liar, a man we have heard could never be trusted. A manipulative serial seducer. Do not let Peter Barlow seduce you. Then I had to scramble all the way through the ceiling, chasing all the wiring through. But well, why didn't you call? Dad, I've been calling you all afternoon. My phone's at the yard. Have you been here all day? Oh, what do you think? I've been having a drink playing darts. Oh. He thinks Liz is going to crack first. Now right, you want some of the... He said what? That if he said sorry, then he'd think about it. Sorry for what? Lying to him. That was none of his business. That was between me and Jim and no one else. He also said he doesn't like women, that's all. Well, I don't like arrogant men. Uh, Liz, sorry to interrupt, though, but, uh... Any chance of a pint? Any number one. No, you'll be all right with him. As long as he doesn't take after his dad. <sighs> Who's this now? Ty? You may consider that when Miss McIntyre was attacked later on that evening, Mr Barlow was in the back room of the Rover's Return public house telling his wife the truth. So you must ask yourselves this crucial question. Why would Mr. Barlow confess to damning and humiliating details that only Miss McIntyre would have known if he himself already thought her to be dead? Does that sound like the next logical step for a man who's just committed murder? The murder of the only other person who could verify these details. This illogical leap must not be underestimated. Indeed, it is a leap, is it not? Yet to be credibly accounted for within this room. All part of his grand plan. An elaborate smokescreen. None of these hold water. And not a single piece of evidence says otherwise. His fingerprints were not found on the missing top hat charm. And despite being accused of transporting underneath his coat 
A blood-stained iron bar. No traces of blood were found on Mr. Barlow's coat. And nor did he stash any iron bar at his parents' outhouse, nor subsequently dispose of it elsewhere. Why? Because Peter Barlow did not attempt to take Miss McIntyre's life. Peter Barlow was elsewhere. Telling his wife the truth. Oh, oh. Finally decided to come back, have you? Sorry, I have had the loveliest time. We drove to Mac Forest. And Luke suggested this marvellous route. So then I said I'd treat him to lunch. So we had a sandwich in this wonderful pub overlooking the whole of Cheshire. Honestly, Maria, I could have sat there all afternoon. Mm, I bet. But Luke had to get back to work, of course. Do you know, he is carrying that place single-handedly. I mean, with Kevin being away and then Tyrone being incapacitated. And I never realised how fascinating it was being a mechanic. Yeah, it sounds like it. I had a uh, chicken and pesto wrap, and Luke had uh, ploughman's, and he wouldn't let me pay. Oh. No. So, are you going to see him again, then? Well, do you know, I still am just a little bit nervous driving on my own, so he said, yes, we could do it again. Right. He's got the most wonderful eyes, you know, and a lovely smile, hasn't he? And he's got such, well, lovely, delicate hands for a mechanic. Did I mention that? No, no, you didn't. Mrs. Roberts. Oh. <laughs> I've somehow ended up with your keys. So you have. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, see you next time. Yes. Bye then. Bye. Oh. <sighs> right. All done. No one will be kicking that in. Did they give him a crown number? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Right, I'll write you a seat out, Roy, and you can give it to your shores, okay? Thank you. I'll drop it in tomorrow. I've had a bit of a tidy around up there. I don't know what you want me to do with your trains and things, whether they're worth keeping. What have I done my phone? You've not left it upstairs, have you? Oh, no, no, I've got it. Right, I love you and leave you. Cheers, Jase. No problem. And Roy, take it easy, OK? Th thank you again. Right, this is my last one, then I've got to pick Jack up from the child miner. You sure you don't want one? No, I've got to see a man about a dog. You getting a dog? Is that the key to your heart? Oh, no, uh, my flat. Todd's just brought him back. All right. Is he still working for Tracy? Yeah, as far as I know. Oh, let's be honest. You wouldn't buy a radio alarm clock from Todd or Tracy, <laughs> would you? What a combination. He's not that bad underneath. And underneath that is even more rotten. The stress he's put his mother through. Oh, hello. Finally tearing yourself away. It's a hell of a dartboard. Is there uh, anything you want to say to anyone? Who? I'll leave you two to chat. I think I'd rather change a barrel. One little word, that's all she's going to say. Funny that, because I can think of two. But are you sure you're going to be all right? Yes, Chef. You know you're welcome to stay with me and Fizz. I don't think they'll be back. Oh, I doubt it, but if you hear anything or see anything, ring one of us right away. I will, Liz. Right, well... well I'm so sorry. Please, please. Well, good night, then. Good night. Good night. And uh, uh, thank you. You have also heard from witnesses stating that Mr. Barlow was seen entering and exiting Miss McIntyre's flat in an agitated state. From Mrs. Barlow, we have an account of the defendant's subsequent confession of his affair with Miss McIntyre. You've heard details of a brutal and heinous crime. You must decide whether you are sure Mr. Barlow is guilty of this crime. I urge you to base your decision only on the evidence you have heard in this case. You're not deciding whether Mr. Barlow is a, a bad man, an immoral man who deserves punishment for his various 
infidelities and foibles, you are deciding whether there is sufficient evidence to find Mr. Barlow guilty of the murder of Miss Tina McIntyre. Let me remind you that if the evidence you have heard does not make you sure of Mr. Barlow's guilt, you must arrive at a verdict of not guilty. And remember, your verdict must be unanimous. Will you please now retire? The 80s is the theme for our week two of the X Factor live shows this weekend, Saturday and Sunday night at 8 here on ITV. Sunday at 9 it's Downton Abbey and Lady Cora continues to flirt while Branson decides if Miss Bunting is the right girl for him. Next tonight though, brand new Lewis. Lewis. 